Welcome to Missouri 2021 Presents. I'm Beth Pike with the State Historical Society of Missouri in Columbia. We're just a month away from Statehood Day and a lot is happening in Missouri, so we'll spend the next hour giving you an update on what not to miss and taking your questions. And our panelists are Jefferson City Mayor Carrie Turgeon, who serves as co-chair of the Missouri Bicentennial Commission. We have Michael Sweeney, Missouri Bicentennial Coordinator, and Danielle Griego, also on our Bicentennial staff, who is organizing together for 21 Fest in Columbia. Jamie Henry and Susan Love of First Missouri State Capitol State Historic Site are joining us from St. Charles, and we'll crisscross back to the west side of the state to hear from Carrie Mergen, Marketing Director for Missouri State Fair. First, you'll hear from us, and then we'll get to your questions in the audience. You can type a comment or question at any time during the program where you see the button for Q&A at the bottom of your screen, and we'll pick it up later in the show. Statehood Day in Missouri is August 10th. In 1821, on that very date, Missouri joined the Union as the 24th state. This past year, we've had a chance to reflect on Missouri and its 200 years. We've had bicentennial projects that helped us learn more about our state, including the indigenous people who lived here well before European settlers. And many of our programs in the past year or two have given us an understanding of events in our history, where we did things really well and where we did things as a state really wrong. Most importantly, we have had projects and conversations on where do we go from here? What type of future do we want for Missouri? So as we reach this big milestone on August 10th, we hope you'll take time to celebrate and commemorate Missouri. Starting with Statehood Day events and activities at the Missouri State Capitol, let's hear from Michael Sweeney, who is one of the reasons all of us are here and participating in the Bicentennial. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. Uh, yes, very happy and excited to tell you uh, kind of some of the stuff that's going on uh, in Jefferson City on Statehood Day. Of course, state, you know, Missouri Statehood Day is one of four major events um, that the Missouri Bicentennial Commission is overseeing uh, to commemorate our 200th anniversary. And you'll hear about some of the others uh, a little bit later in the program. But of course, Statehood Day, the actual day, is, is kind of the culminating event of what has been years of involvement um, and participation from people in all 114 counties and the independent city of St. Louis. Um, so State of the Day in Jefferson City, there'll be a number of, of pieces to this that I want to make sure you're aware of, um, and hopefully we'll be able to take the opportunity to, to come out and be a part of that. Um, the first thing will be at 9 a.m. Uh, on the Missouri State Capitol uh, steps out front. Um, there'll be sort of the formal ceremony of recognizing uh, Missouri's 200th anniversary. Um, Probably the biggest piece of this will be the, the reveal of, of the Missouri Bicentennial stamp. So um, the United States Postal Service executives will be on site um, and with Governor Parson will we'll reveal the stamp. Uh, and then, of course, later in the day, um, that will be the first day of issuance uh, for the stamp, not just in Jefferson City, but also around the country. Uh, so there'll be opportunities to, to get your first state cancellation um, uh, um, that day as well. Uh, there will be a remarks from uh, Gary Kramer, Executive Director of, of the State Historical Society, Senator Roy Blunt, uh, Chief Justice uh, uh, Paul Wilson, uh, and then of course Governor Parson um, will we'll make remarks, but also sign a proclamation recognizing uh, the day. We'll have some musical performances, uh, the Missouri National Guard Band uh, will be on hand for that. Um, and as like I said, it, it's this, this kind of high formal ceremony of, of the importance of, of what we've all been doing um, for the last several years. Um, immediately following that is, is a really exciting opportunity. Um, the, we're gonna have a US nationalization, uh, naturalization ceremony 1045 on the first floor rotunda. If you have never seen or experienced one of these, um, they are really uh, just emotional experiences, I think, for everyone involved. Um, and we're very honored that this could be part of um, Missouri Statehood Day as we welcome not just new uh, citizens to the United States, but also new citizens to Missouri um, who will participate in our, our community and social life um, for many, many years to come. Um, additionally, in the Capitol that day, um, Missouri State Museum has put together a number for wonderful exhibits, um, Missouri History Timeline, the Trailblazers exhibit. In addition to that, um, my Missouri 2021 photograph uh, project will be on display. The Missouri Bicentennial quilt uh, will be there. The Missouri 4-H quilt will be there. So there's a number of opportunities um, to be able to, to see some of these things. Also the Missouri Time Capsule, uh, Bicentennial Time Capsule will be on site and we hope folks will come by and write their notes to the future that can be part of that time capsule that you know, uh, will, will, will um, be available to future generations of, of Missourians. Um, in the afternoon um, will be the, the Missouri 2021 Ice Cream Social, two o'clock at Central Dairy and Governor Parsons is gonna give the first ceremonial scoop for the day. Um, and of course, 
you've heard us talk about the ice cream social before. Uh, one of the things that's been very important to us is finding ways to engage folks across the state. What could, the idea came up, what could we actually all do on August 10th, right? Tuesday afternoon and evening um, in the hot of summer. And the ice cream social idea came up. Um, at this point, we have a, a little over 80 registered events in over 50 counties. Um, so th that many communities and that many places are gonna be involved in this ice cream social. And if your community or county is not, uh, I hope you'll take some, um, do some work within your community and, and, and get, um, get an event registered. You can find more about that on our website. Um, and, and you can get that piece registered um, there as well. Um, we're, all, we're planning on uh, hopefully all of us sharing our, our photographs of our ice cream social. So while, while Governor Parson is, is uh, kicking it off there in Jefferson City, we hope that your community will be part of this, um, this as well. Um, that's, those are the highlights of, of, of August 10th there, there in the Capitol. Um, though, you know, the other big thing that's going to be on display, uh, will, or I'm hoping nearing completion, is the, is the Bicentennial Bridge. Um, in fact, so we're going to turn this over, over to Mayor Turgeon to talk a little bit about, about that project and kind of its culmination on and around yep. Statehood Day. Absolutely. And I just wanted to mention that uh, Jefferson City Mayor Carrie Turgeon, she co-chairs the Bicentennial Commission, along with former Missouri Senator Ron Richard. Um, and she's going to be joining us next. Um, I have to say that Mary Turgeon is a bridge maker. And I say not just in her efforts to easily bring people together, but she does a terrific job of. But in this instance, Carrie's behind plans for building the Bicentennial Bridge in her hometown city of Jefferson that will take pedestrians from the Capitol grounds over to the railroad tracks to Adrian's Island. And the architect of the project put together a short video. I've edited down a bit to about a minute 30 to give you an idea of what it is being built. So I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Wow, that was a wonderful video, and thank you for sharing that, Beth. And it's very exciting to see the concept of what the Bicentennial Bridge is going to look like. And it is currently under construction here in the capital city, so I can't wait to tell you all about it. And uh, like Beth said, I am Carrie Turgeon. I'm the mayor of the capital city. Really enjoy serving as the co-chair along with Senator Ron Richard for the Statewide Bicentennial Commission. We want to invite you to share your bicentennial experience wherever you are in the state. And we also know being the mayor of Jefferson City, like Michael touched on, we have a lot going on here in Jefferson City on Statehood Day on August 10th. So uh, also as part of that, we will have the day before that, we're going to have a dedication for the Bicentennial Bridge on Monday, August 9th. So at 2 p.m. here in the capital city, we're going to dedicate uh, what we have, what we've been working for. And then the uh, completion date for the Bicentennial Bridge will be this fall. So it is still under construction here during our Bicentennial year. So let me tell you about this and what is the Bicentennial Bridge. When you turn 200 and the state is having its 200th birthday, you aren't going to go to a birthday without a gift. Well, this happens to be the largest gift to the state bicentennial. So this gift in our bicentennial year is going to be a beautiful bridge at the Capitol. And Beth is sharing a picture right now to show you the construction of this bridge. It's made of steel and concrete. 
and it will lead from our state capital grounds. You can see the capital there and it will lead over these eight railroad tracks uh, down to our beautiful riverfront here in Jefferson City. So right now people might ask, why is it that we haven't been able to build that? Well, those eight railroad tracks have always been a barrier to get to uh, our riverfront. So this kind of shows you what it will look like and it'll have amazing views of the Capitol, views that we've really never been able to see and enjoy before. And it will lead uh, to our riverfront. And that land that you see there, that is called Adrian's Island. It's about a 30 acre piece of land. It's about a mile long. It starts there at the Missouri State Capitol and ends at the historic Missouri State Penitentiary historic tourist attraction. So that's how long Adrian's Island is. Uh, what's interesting about uh, Adrian's Island as well is uh, we, we really never had a riverfront, but what happened is over the years through accretion that has been built up and now has become a 30 acre piece of land with an amazing, uh, it, it's got trees and, and the, uh, the nature that you see there is very unique and very uh, beautiful with the riverfront access there. So it's something that you, you don't normally find. Uh, being a river city and being a capital city make us very unique as well. And also with all of the people that come to Jefferson City to visit uh, our capital. So uh, we're very excited to have this gift uh, to the statewide uh, bicentennial, naming it the Bicentennial Bridge. And what's interesting too, it is something that has been many years in the making. So just the history of this itself is part of our history. So I actually have a riverfront development plan right here. And this is literally from uh, 1970. So this is June of 1970. And in June of 2020, Jefferson City Council signed our construction contract for the Bicentennial Bridge. So literally 50 years almost to the day that they really uh, have been coming up with this plan. And really having access to our river has been talked about for many, many years. But why it has finally come to fruition is I uh, really was spearheaded by a lady named BJ DeLong. And here is BJ. Uh, she is, I believe, about 97 years old uh, from DeLong Steel. She is uh, definitely, in fact, she was part of this plan 50 years ago. Uh, her dream was to get to the river, and, and she gave a $3.2 million gift to the Bicentennial Bridge to get it really uh, going. And there's many, many people who have also donated to this uh, wor very worthy project. Um, we also uh, are continuing to fundraise for it so that we can add some extras, but the basic bridge itself is around a, a little over $4 million project. Um, and you can find more information about it at bicentennialbridge.org. This is really something that is a legacy for the future, for future generations. Uh, when they come to visit the Capitol, they'll be able to see the river. And as we know, the Missouri River has been an integral part of our history here in the capital city. Our capital city would have not happened or been formed without the history. And you can think about the steamboats coming down the river and all that the river means to our state. But however, when you come to the capital city, there is no way to access our riverfront. So uh, it's, it's highly unusual. We have a beautiful uh, uh, capital, but no way to get to the river. You actually have to go across the river on the other side if you really want to get down close to the river. So we're very excited about this project. Um, but the bridge itself is very unique. It will be a part of history. It's not just going to be getting from point A to point B. Um, this is a bike and pedestrian bridge, but the bridge itself will have history along it. So when you start at the bridge, I'll take you from the capital down to the island. The first thing you will see is that we're honoring our veterans. If you are familiar with where this is going to be on the capital grounds, it will be near the Veterans Memorial Monuments. So it will tie in with all the veterans monuments. And I'm excited to say that we are adding a Gold Star Families Memorial Monument there. So, uh, and I have a picture here. This is the shirts that they are, are selling. And you can see what a Gold Star Families Memorial Monument looks like. I believe we will be one of just a handful of capitals that actually has one on the Capitol grounds. That will be at the very entrance of the Bicentennial Bridge. They are going to be placing that um, monument here in July, and they are going to have a dedication on Capitol grounds, I believe the Saturday before the Bicentennial, I believe at 11 a.m., and I think that is Saturday, August 7th, uh, and anyone is invited to the um, dedication of the uh, Gold Star Families Memorial Monument on our Capitol grounds right at the entrance of the bridge. Then as you walk along the Bicentennial Bridge, it's about 12 feet wide, so it'll have plenty of room for, for walking and biking and enjoying the views of our capital. The area that goes over the railroad tracks has a fenced-in area, 
And the fence won't just be like any fence. We're actually going to place panels of artwork along the fence. Uh, you might have noticed those panels in the video that was shown that will have some figures in Missouri history. Union Pacific Railroad is already sponsoring one of those panels to tell the story of uh, transportation and rail history in our state. And along there, we want to tell the story of Missouri's 200 years in the past and present and moving into the future. So the bridge itself will be a part of history. And then as you get on the island itself, uh, we think the island will be a great place for walking, biking. There will be benches. It will be a park-like setting with trails that you can walk along and enjoy. It's a very wooded area uh, along the river with amazing views of both the river and the capital. Uh, we also have some, some really neat uh, amenities that will be there. We're going to have a life-size chessboard, and the chessboard panels will show uh, different, uh, different aspects of history with the bicentennial. So that will be very unique. And something else that's one of a kind is we will have remnants from the Capitol itself. So we all know that our Capitol just went through a major renovation 100 years after it was built. Uh, and a lot of the uh, original columns that were at the very top, which they call the lantern of the Capitol, those columns are going to be placed on the island. So you will be able to go to Adrian's Island, get up close to some of those remnants from the Capitol, take pictures and actually see where they were originally on the Capitol. So what a unique experience. We know a lot of students throughout the state come to the Capitol every year. Now they'll have a chance to take a sack lunch, go down there to the island and learn even more about our history of our state, of our Capitol building itself, maybe learn how to play chess with the life-size chessboard. Uh, it will be a beautiful park-like setting. We also anticipate this will be a great place to hold events and receptions. So while the bridge is only for bikes and pedestrians, it is going to be able to handle uh, things like a food truck or things for festivals to have down there as well. Um, the island itself is around 30 acres, like I said before, from the capital to the penitentiary. Uh, and the penitentiary site itself is also a big part of Missouri's history. They offer tours there. So eventually we anticipate that that will tie in with the historic penitentiary site so that you could essentially do a loop around uh, the entire area. And we also know how much that we connect with our um, with our biking trails in the state of Missouri. The Katy Trail also connects in with this because you can get off the Bicentennial Bridge at the Capitol and there's the bike lane alongside the Missouri River Bridge that ties right into the Katy Trail. So there's so many opportunities for interaction, for nature, for um, uh, athletics, for uh, you know healthy uh, walking and biking and, and just learning about our history and learning about our environment. Uh, the river, the capital, uh, you name it, it's all going to really be part of this amazing project. So uh, we're thankful to everyone that has made this happen, all of our donors who saw the vision. Uh, it wasn't as easy as it sounded. There were years ago, we thought, well, maybe we'll go over the tracks or under the tracks, build a tunnel under there. How are we going to get to our riverfront? And we have found that this is the best way because not only do we get to our riverfront, but we have an amazing bridge itself that will tell the story of our history and in our bicentennial year. And it's really remarkable because we're calling it the Bicentennial Bridge, having it built and completed in our bicentennial year in the state of Missouri, when it's something that's been talked about well over 50 years, the fact that it's all coming together right now is the perfect timing and the perfect gift to the state for our bicentennial. So we invite you all here to, to come and enjoy the bridge. Like I said, it will be completed this fall. While we will hold a dedication during the Bicentennial itself on that Monday of the Bicentennial weekend for Statehood uh, Week, we also anticipate we'll have another big celebration this fall, and we invite you and your families to come to Jefferson City. If you'd like to learn more, you're welcome to reach out to me or bicentennialbridge.org has the video and information. We are still taking donations as well, but we want people to just basically come and enjoy this gift to the capital uh, on behalf of the capital city. So uh, thank you for letting me share about the Bicentennial Bridge. Well, thank you so much, Mayor Turgeon. And um, I was gonna save the questions at the end, but one came up that I'll ask you real quickly about, and that is what is the distance from the mainland to the island? I'm glad you asked that. It is about 830 feet and it is just a slight curve. I'm not sure if you could tell from some of those photos. So it's a beautiful curve. It doesn't, um, it's not one of those that kind of goes in a spiral uh, like you find on the other side of the river. It's actually very smooth. It's ADA compliant and, and it's 830 feet. Thank you. 
So the weekend before Statehood Day, we're going to be celebrating Missouri's birthday with events geared towards the humanities with music, dance, theater, art, talks, and so much more. Danielle Grigo, Strategic Communications Associate for the State Historical Society, is part of our small but mighty bicentennial team this year, and you'll likely recognize her daily post on our social media accounts. And like all of us, Danielle wears many hats, and when she's not giving talks in her off time on medieval history, Dr. Grigo is hard at work helping us plan the bicentennial year, including the Together for 21 Fest in Columbia. Danielle, tell us more about what's happening. Thank you, Beth, and thanks to everyone for joining us. I'm going to share my screen really quick. Today, I wanted to talk about Together for 21 Fest, which will be held in Columbia, Missouri from August 6th through the 8th. The event is organized by the State Historical Society of Missouri and the University of Missouri, and activities will be scattered around MU campus, the Center for Missouri Studies, um, and also we'll have some performances at Missouri Theater and a, a softball demonstration game at the MU Softball Complex. So before I get into some of the activities that we're going to have available to people, I wanted to point out that this is a really great event um, to come and see what people have been doing throughout the bicentennial year and before that um, to commemorate uh, the uh, Missouri statehood. So for example, we'll have a number of exhibits on display that have been traveling throughout the state in honor of the bicentennial. And we'll also have a number of talks and presentations on projects that are dedicated to the bicentennial. For example, we'll have um, Barb Bailey and Aaron Horrell talk about the bicentennial mural. And we'll also have um, some university professors come and talk about some projects that they've been working on for recent publications. So again, this is just a really great opportunity to come and see what people have been up to. So let's talk about some of the events that we're going to offer throughout the weekend. It's really a chance to come and participate in these activities because we have a, such a variety of them. Um, and the ones I list are by no means the fullest because we have so many. So both adults and kids will have a chance to participate and have a really fun weekend. Um, on August 6th, we're going to have an evening of Missouri music at Jesse Auditorium. And the real goal of this concert is to showcase major musical traditions of the state and also to show how artists have their own spin on these genres themselves. We have a great lineup. We have the Dylan Triplett Blues Band out of St. Louis. We also have the Kay Brothers and the Bernie Sisters representing the Ozark folk genre. And we also have the Kansas City Latin Jazz Orchestra with a special dance performance by Carmen Dentz of Grupo Atlantico. So great opportunity to come and see some music that really has influenced the national stage of music. Okay, on Saturday, um, it's a great time to get outside and enjoy a ball game. We've teamed up with Missouri Special Olympics to host a demonstration softball game. Um, and this will be held at the MU Softball Complex. The teams are the Friends from Kansas City and the Jets Unified from St. Louis. So again, great opportunity to, to bring the whole family and enjoy a game. And then we continue on Saturday with some performances and a documentary viewing as well. At Missouri Theater, people will get the chance to see the premiere of Missouri, a bicentennial celebration. This is going to be presented by Missouri State University and um, is a collaboration by Missouri PBS stations. The Maplewood Barn Theater will also be performing um, three signature plays at Jesse Auditorium on the 7th. And this will be the 5th of July, uh, Shakespeare's Henry V and Plan 9, the musical from Outer Space. Um, and these films really aim to reflect the talent of Missouri playwrights, as well as the rich culture and heritage of the state. All right, on Sunday, the festivities continue with more performances. We have Music in the American Wild performing their program, Missouri Music at 200. And they will be performing compositions that were inspired by Missouri geography and landscape. We also have Voices of Arrow Rock by Arrow Rock Lyceum Theater and Friends of Arrow Rock. And this theatrical performance will be giving us insight to the early lives of Arrow Rock citizens um, and show us what life was like on the Missouri frontier in the early to mid 19th century. So we have a lot of 
fun performances and the baseball game going on. In addition to um, those activities, we also have a series of exhibits and folk arts programs throughout the weekend. We've partnered with Missouri Folk Arts Programs to host two fiddling jam sessions, one on Friday and one on Saturday. We were going to have John P. Williams, apprentice of the late Pete McMahon, as the anchor fiddler for Friday. He will be joined by Dave Cabins and Amber Gaddy as backup. On Saturday, we're going to have Alan Gomez, who is uh, the apprentice of the late Vesta Johnson, leading the uh, fiddler session. And she will have uh, Pete Howard, Thomas Coriel, Kim Lancert on rhythm guitar, and Dave Landreth on banjo. So a lot of fun opportunities to be outside and listen to music. Um, we also have a blacksmith demonstration on Saturday, and they will be demonstrating traditional uh, techniques of the craft. And the blacksmiths participating are Bob Alexander, uh, Ken Jansen, Pat McCarty, Mike McLaughlin, and Bernard Tappel. Okay, in addition to some of the folk arts programs, I've mentioned this, but we have a number of exhibits to really come and see uh, for Together for 21. We will have a quilt exhibit, and this will feature the bicentennial quilts along with other uh, quilts honoring the bicentennial from other counties. We'll also have the four bicentennial poster contest winners on display at the Center for Missouri Studies. We'll have the My Missouri 2021 photograph exhibit out in the lobby for the Center for Missouri Studies. And we'll also even have a chance to have the Benton pop-up mural exhibit. And this uh, mural is scaled up to 70% so people can get a real feel for what the house lounge uh, Benton murals look like. And we also have uh, an ex a virtual reality exhibit that was produced by the MU engineering students. And that will allow people to see all 98 of Missouri Heart of the Nation paintings, which was commissioned in 1946 and 47 by Vandervoort's uh, St. Louis department store. In addition to the ex exhibits on display, we have book talks and presentations. Professor Jeffrey Pasley will be talking about his recent publication, A Fire Bell in the Past, The Missouri Crisis at 200. Dr. William Belko will be talking about contesting the Constitution, Congress debates the Missouri crisis, 1819 to 1821. Um, and as I mentioned before, Barb Bailey and Aaron Horrell will be talking about the Bicentennial Mural Project, about the process of the project and how they got where they are now. We'll also have some uh, presentations on Missouri food. The Governor's Mansion uh, will be talking about the Governor's Mansion cookbook. And we'll also have a podcast that specializes on uh, traditional Missouri foods as well, giving a presentation. So in addition to the book talks and presentations, we'll also have a chance for chil uh, children programming. The Kansas City Latin Jazz Orchestra will be uh, hosting an interactive program um, with instruments. People will also get chances to um, see some dance demonstrations. Grupo Atlantico will be, form, be performing traditional Colombian dances at Together for 21 Fest. We also have the Federation of Round and Square Dance Clubs doing a demonstration square dance. So a lot of fun things to see and listen to throughout the weekend. Um, another project that has been traveling around the state is Missouri on Mike that will also be at Together for 21 Fest. Um, this is in co collaboration with MU journalism students, and they will be recording oral histories from people that want to participate in the project. Um, and I've just left the link to Statehood Day events in case anybody wants to learn more about what's going on across the state. Um, you will also find a schedule and registration form on the website. And people who register for the event will get a chance to win a, a prize package if they attend the event. So make sure to do that. Um, and it's going to be a really fun weekend. Uh, so I encourage you to come out and have some fun, try some different activities. Um, and I hope that we're together for 21. Thank you. Thanks so much, Danielle. And we put that also in the chat and the Q&A function, the web address. So 
you got it right there. Um, encourage people to check that out. So next on our program, another event happening in St. Charles on August 7th is being organized by the Missouri uh, Department of Natural Resources. Jamie Henry is a historic site manager and Susan Love is an interpretive resource specialist at First Missouri State Capitol State Historic Site. Welcome to the program, Jamie. Hi, thank you, Beth. Uh, Sue is actually downstairs watching the desk, so I, I'm covering this today. I wanted to um, thank everybody for coming to the presentation today, and then I get the distinct privilege of actually going back in time. Um, Mayor Turgeon, she is in the current, in Jefferson City, where the current capital is. Our site is in St. Charles at the location of the first Missouri State Capitol. So when I used to work in Jefferson City, now I get to tell people I went back in time um, to take on this new job here. The first Missouri State Capitol is actually in St. Charles, Missouri. And I wanted to just kind of show everybody what it looked like. So this is our visitor center. We actually celebrated our 50th anniversary as a state historic site this past February. And the first state capital was actually in St. Charles uh, in this building that was built in 1817, 18, 18, 18, 19, around thereabouts um, in the upper floors here. So when the state was formed, they knew they wanted to have the capital in Jefferson City, but Jefferson City didn't exist to have the capital in it. So they needed to select a temporary capital. St. Charles was chosen and um, this site was the site of it. Now, if you, this works, I can actually show you inside of it. Always technical difficulties. I'll just show you our backyard first. So this is our backyard. The um, They would have used a back porch like this to get upstairs and they would have uh, had to go up there every, every day that they were in session. Um, the front is restored to the historic downtown of St. Charles. And we are planning to have a uh, event on August 7th, uh, the Saturday before. We decided not to do it on the statehood day. We wanted to have the weekend. And the event's gonna be approximately from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. For the majority of the event, but we'll be having music and concerts from uh, 10 a.m. till about 8 p.m. Uh, I wanted to go over that will be in Frontier Park, which is back over here. So it'll be in our backyard, which you can see back here. So it'll be in our backyard of the site, but it'll also stretch into Frontier Park here, which is along the Missouri River. So we'll actually have um, events and presenters and live music all set up throughout the day. So I'm going to pull up this. This is the flyer. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask about the flyer. Uh, the main thing that we're going to be doing is what we're calling our parade through the decades. Uh, when we were planning the event, we had originally envisioned a, a parade, a standard parade, but we're actually doing a reverse parade where we're gonna set up the park like a timeline. So instead of having the parade go by and you get to see something for a couple seconds and then it goes past you, we're gonna have it be stationary along the Katy Trail and along Frontier Park. We have a number of people that are participating in that, uh, which we're excited about. We have uh, the St. Louis Zoo will be participating. We have a number of state parks that will be coming, um, dance discovery, uh, we'll have uh, demonstrators and reenactors and, and all that, and we'll have that list coming out uh, fairly soon. But the, the parade through the decade will be a lot of fun. We're also going to be having the site open for most of our operations. Normally, we do historic tours, but we'll probably have the building open for people to kind of walk through. And we'll also be hosting uh, mock debates to kind of uh, emulate what the, the or stim, simulate what the events might have been like back in the 1820s when the capital was here in St. Charles. Um, and we're doing that in partnership with the city um, who has some actors and, and a script that they've put together to do that. Um, the other thing that we were able to do leading up to this is that we actually have a heritage program that we're doing throughout the, um, throughout the, the year. And let me see. So our, uh, we have two that are coming up in July leading up into the event. So on the 21st, we are having um, Adam McFarland from the Missouri History Museum. He's gonna be coming and doing a program on the wardrobe of the first Missouri State Capitol. So he's actually gonna be talking about that and then he'll have a component at our event on the 7th. 
And then also on Saturday, Saturday, July 17th, we're also having the Benton mural, which I think will be the first time the Benton mural will have been at this Capitol. So that'll be kind of a cool little link uh, going on there. We're also gonna be doing a cake decorating competition because since it's our state's birthday, you can't have a birthday without a cake. So uh, on our website, we have this uh, call for images and we'll be taking uh, the images and we'll be presenting them to the public and, and doing voting at the day of the event on August 7th. And then the winner will have a prize for you. So if you want more information, uh, please go to our Missouri State Parks website or to our Facebook page. And then also another fun thing that we're planning to do is in the park or on our grounds, uh, we're actually gonna have an interactive birthday card. So we'll have makerspace activities uh, for people to make birthday cards and it'll be a large photo op. So we're excited about that. And then the other thing we're planning to do that weekend is we're gonna have a plein air event all throughout St. Charles. So you'll be able to come if you're an artist or if you wanna see an artist at work, they'll be coming and painting different parts of St. Charles. And then we'll have that being judged and then on display later on in the afternoon. Um, with that, I think I'm pretty much done. I'm happy to answer any questions and then I can provide my contact information because we are still looking for um, more and more participants because the goal of this is we wanna have as many cultural institutions and organizations represented from across the state. And we've been doing that um, you know, pretty much this entire year, just identifying people and getting them to come. So thank you so much for that, Jamie. And we will have uh, answered some questions here at the very end of the program, but very first before that, we have a final guest, uh, which is Carrie Mergen, Marketing Director at the Missouri State Fair, who will tell us about the highlight of this year's fair, which is themed Our Missouri Celebration. It is happening August 12th through the 22nd in Sedalia, and Michael's going to chime in a little later to tell us about special bicentennial exhibits and projects at the fair as well. Carrie, thanks for being here. Um, so the fair was uh, founded in 1901. It's a showcase for agriculture first and foremost, but it is obviously a showcase um, for our state, which was uh, celebrated in 1921 for the state centennial. Um, the poster was um, designed um, to, and the fair was themed around the uh, centennial of the state. So certainly fitting that we are continuing that with the bicentennial and we're really excited to be a part of that um, this year to celebrate um, here at the fair again. Um, as Beth mentioned, our theme this year is our Missouri celebration. Um, I got permission from Michael to kind of beg and steal and borrow a little bit of the elements from the bicentennial theme. We didn't want it to be identical, but we wanted it to uh, mirror it in some fashion. So um, as you can see, we took the stars, we took the shape of Missouri, the font's not exact. We tried to, you know, um, go with a, a little scripty font to, to kind of mirror that as well and um, the colors, using the same colors so that we're very complimentary when we're using the two pieces together in our marketing um, to honor, again, the state's bicentennial with the past, present, and future at the fair. So there's a lot of brainstorming and list making and meetings that brought all this together at the state fair. And some of the things um, Danielle's already talked about um, that uh, are gonna be at the event that she's coordinating um, I certainly am not the expert on any of these, so that's why, Michael, um, feel free to chime in um, anytime uh, regarding these items. Um, basically, we're just happy to host all of this. So uh, we're having what's called My Missouri 21, 2021 Central. It's going to be housed in the Women's Building. Department of Natural Resources has given some of their prime real estate in that building uh, to the Bicentennial to house that. Um, so uh, the Bicentennial Quilt which you heard Danielle mention, will be housed there. Um, anything, Michael, you want to chime in on that? No, I, I yeah, so we're, we've got the Bicentennial quilt there, and, and Karen, I'm going to let you keep going, and I will okay. chime well, in. Well, you just, just interrupt me if there's something you want to, to pop in there. Um, the posters um, will also be on display there at Bicentennial, uh, where we call it my, my Missouri 2021 20, Central or Bicentennial Central, we call it both those things. Um, so all the posters will be on display there as well. Um, the merchandise, we'll be able to purchase the official merchandise there um, in the women's building during the state fair. Um, go through this list here. Uh, the Missouri on Mike, uh, recording those stories uh, from Missourians. Uh, KBIA will be there, uh, I believe, every day to record stories, people that want to pop in and tell their story. 
uh, the State of Stories. Uh, Missouri Storytellers will be there on Tuesday, August 17th to tell uh, their stories, uh, their master storytellers telling the history of, of our state. I threw this one in here, Michael, because I'm bound to determine this one's happening. Um, the Missouri Explorers program, uh, still a work in progress, um, but uh, you, do you want to kind of explain that a little bit, Michael, the whole program? Sure. So the Missouri Explorers, and I think we talked about a little bit on this program before, mm -hmm. um, was de is designed to get folks moving out and about uh, the state. And, and at this point, there's well over a thousand people registered. And uh, I hope that the folks that are listening and, and watching are, are one of them and that they're taking the chance to get out and see the state. Uh, but for Missouri State Fair, we're having a special challenge that will only be available at Missouri State Fair from the 12th through the 22nd. Um, grateful to Carrie and her team for, for doing the groundwork of the story of Layman's app. So we'll we'll make the challenge visible probably here in, in, in a few weeks, but it will only be available um, during during Missouri State Fair. So it's an added encouragement to take the opportunity. If you have A, if you've never been to State Fair, you certainly should go, uh, but also hopefully encourage you to return um, to this great uh, Missouri tradition. So. Thank you. Um, then we had um, some partner exhibits. So um, Michael and I reached out to some of the fair partners and, and tried to, you know, to get them their buy-in um, for the bicentennial. And we've had some really good feedback from, from those folks. Um, Missouri Electric Cooperatives is going to house the My Missouri 2021 photo project. So people will be able to go into their building um, every day during the fair and see that. Um, Missouri 4-H is going to have their bicentennial quilt in the building, uh, so you can go in there and check that out while you're at the fair as well. Our home ec department, uh, they jumped on the chance to participate. Uh, we have what's called a family heirloom recipe contest that is going to be, um, and it's been endorsed by the Bicentennial. Um, so family recipes that are more than 50 years old, uh, they're submitted, they bring those to the fair and, and they're judged uh, one day during the fair. Missouri Department of Transportation will have their maps uh, in their building. They are uh, bicent the, call it the bicentennial edition of the State Fair map. I was, or sorry, not State Fair map, but the State Fair on the brain, Missouri State map. Um, I was kind of shocked. We still print maps, but pretty excited to see and um, definitely something to go to go grab while you're here at the fair. University of Missouri um, is going to host the Struggle for Statehood exhibit in uh, Moag Theater or what we call Mizzou Central. So um, you'll be able to go and uh, check that out again every day at the fair. Also in the Moag Theater and Mizzou Central, um, University of Missouri Extension, they have a presence in that building and they are doing uh, food demos with historic recipes from Missouri chefs and cooks. And then they always recommend or recognize Century Farms uh, for the state. This year, they are going to recognize uh, founding farms. So families that have had their family farm since 1821. So that's a really, really cool, special thing that they're doing this year just for the Bicentennial. Missouri Department of Agriculture, uh, they set up and organized the agriculture building. They are doing an ag venture program um, and they're tweaking it again to tell the history of Missouri agriculture. Uh, so kind of an interactive, hands-on, uh, close look at the history of ag throughout um, the past 200 years. The fabulous butter cow, I don't have a picture of it yet because it hasn't been created, uh, but they are going to, to theme it somehow to the early 1900s. They were on a quest from me to find a picture of a grand champion cow from the very first fair in 1901. And I, I could not help them with that, uh, but we found some, some older photos of cattle um, and so they're going to try to emulate that somehow, some way. I'm always really excited to see uh, what that looks like when it when it turns out. But they are theming theirs um, back to the, the first fairs um, as close as they can in butter somehow. Uh, we have what's called the Ditzfield stage here on our fairgrounds. And this year, our entertainment department has committed to only uh, putting Missouri performers on that stage this year. So everyone that you see listed there um, is a Missouri group, Missouri band. Um, and so all of those uh, artists are Missourians who will be performing uh, throughout the fair on various days. Um, our opening day, wanted to uh, throw out a couple of those. Um, 
events. Um, our opening day ceremony takes place um, on at 11 o'clock on our opening day, which is Thursday, August 12th. Uh, Mayor Turgeon will be there. Um, we have representatives from our State Fair Commission. We invite um, the governor and lieutenant governor. I haven't got an absolute 100% going to be there, but I think it's looking looking good. Um, it's just the official kickoff to the State Fair. And so, of course, the Bicentennial will be a focus of that event. Our opening day parade is themed with our fair theme, our Missouri celebration. So encouraging uh, people that are entering to really think about the Bicentennial in our state when they create their entries and bring those to the fair and to the parade that evening. So uh, both those events are themed around the Bicentennial as well. What am I forgetting, Michael? I would say you are not, you are not. <laughs> um, let me just, uh, I think the only thing that we're, we're still in, in process of, of um, uh, a few things, um, right. but I, but I think what's happening was very safe fair is very exciting. There's a reason um, that the state fair was chosen in 1921 is to be the, the highlight uh, of the Missouri centennial year. And it is, I think, equally, equally uh, fair. Be funny. Um, <laughs> to have that be this year, right? The, the theme that, that is often heard is, you know, come home to Missouri State Fair. And it really is this bringing together of people across the state. Uh, so again, this is a wonderful opportunity. So my appreciation to you and Mark and all Nancy and all the folks at Missouri State Fair for working on getting some of this stuff together. I think, again, a few things we're still working on. I think the Missouri Bicentennial Time Capsule is going to have its official closing. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to jinx myself. We're, we're, we're getting close, we're getting close. Um, again, it was a very sports thing. There's just a lot of fun and exciting stuff going on. We hope you'll take the time to, to come by and, and, and be a part of that. Absolutely, well, thank you. Yes, with the big events uh, surrounding Statehood Day uh, in August, it's not over. We want people to know there's some other things going on. And Michael, you've got about a minute or so, but fill us in on a few things happening in August and what we can expect this fall. Oh, a minute. Okay, let's see if we can how quickly we can quickly we can do this. Um, yes, as Beth mentioned, there's actually a lot that will go on throughout the, the fall, and um, and and um, and actually a few more things this summer. A few quick things. Kansas City's bicentennial celebration is going to be July 24th. Uh, it's coming up here in a few weeks. They're going to be um, revealing kind of the final statue in their Francois Chouteau uh, fountain. Uh, it's going to be their bicentennial celebration. Missouri um, DAR is going to have a rededication of the Madonna of the Trail. They spent the last year doing a restoration of that in Lexington. Um, made in St. Joseph from steam to steam. This is really, I think, an exciting idea. Connecting up St. Joe's Path with really St. Joe's future. Um, so this will be their bicentennial celebration uh, on August 20th and 21st. Um, sorry, Prairie Foundation uh, is going to be do, uh, dedicating a new prairie for the bicentennial, the the, the Lordy, uh, Lordy Marker Prairie, uh, which is a little bit, if I remember right, south of Sedalia on October 2nd. There's a few more that I haven't gotten on here. Maplewood Barn, I think, has already mentioned. Their shows are continuing on through the summer. All of them are in, engaged in some way, either with Missouri playwrights or they're taking place in Missouri. So you probably saw Henry V there. They're doing it in Missouri, in Missouri context. So it will be performed in a Missouri context. Uh, in fact, I think that show is opening this weekend, so you want to check it out. Also, September 18th uh, will be the Bicentennial Parade. This will correspond with the inaugural um, ball um, that day. So there's all kinds of stuff coming on. And I hope you'll continue to follow us on Missouri2021.org. Um, a couple of real quick final things. On our website, under events, you will find uh, the Statehood Day um, webpage. And we're putting as much information on there as we possibly can about each of these four events. And we're, we will continue to add more information. Um, as Dan you know, mentioned about Together for 21, we have a preliminary schedule of events up there. We would love for you to register. Uh, if you register for the event, that helps us understand where people are coming from, but it also puts you in for a drawing uh, for one of 10 price packs valued at $100 a piece. Um, you'll find information about the schedules for, um, for Jeff City and St. Charles and, and Missouri State Fair on there as well. My last thing that I need to say is I want to, this is the last of our Missouri 2021 percent programs. Um, and while I think my name is probably on this thing, the person who makes this happen is Beth Pike. And she has just done a tremendous job of pulling together great topics, wonderful guests, and I hope uh, it has been very, very useful to you. I think that it has, uh, but I need to extend a, a great appreciation to her. We could not have done any of this uh, program without her, and I think it served a really, really important purpose. So thank you, Beth. Well, you're, you're more than kind, Michael, and it's a team because this whole effort has is tr truly a teamwork, all the way from Mayor Turgeon, all the way to our staff, the State Historical Society, and all of our partners. It's just been amazing team member with all all Missouri County so we can and, and all of you have been joining us so yeah but thank you Michael that's 
very kind of you. Um, now it is time to hear from you, our audience. If you have a question for any of our panelists, you can type it in the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And I've seen a couple questions about some of the merchandise that's being sold, t-shirts. Yes, there are gonna be t-shirts um, with Missouri Statehood Day that's going to be um, sold at our events coming up. It's also online. You can go online at the State Historical Society, shsmo.org to their online bookstore if you would like to order. Um, also, there are t-shirts ordered by the, um, that are being uh, sold by the Missouri State Capitol and St. Charles. I know, Jamie, you have some merchandise too that you put together. I bought a mug that's lovely. Yeah, and a number of our state parks will have um, bicentennial uh, St. Charles. And, yeah, bicentennial shirts and other merchandise that was put together by the State Museum there. Um, so that's been really beneficial. Right. So, uh, yes, you can certainly get your merch. <laughs> um, another question kind of came in, too, was, well, what did the state do to celebrate the centennial? And what do we know about that? Um, Michael, if you want to jump in on that. Sure. Very, I, will, I will do it very, very quickly. It's sort of three aspects I might mention. In some ways, there was certainly this component about what you could do locally uh, to engage in the bicentennial. They even had like a handbook, a handbook of suggestions uh, for what you might do to celebrate the Missouri bison, uh, the Missouri centennial. I keep Missouri bicentennial is what I say, Missouri centennial. Um, and um, additionally, of course, I, I had already mentioned Missouri State Fair was sort of the major highlight. Um, event for that year. The third thing that's always mentioned is the Missouri, the pageant of Missouri, which was this, this historical rendering of Missouri history. If you can think back to 1921, when we did not have cell phones and TV um, and all these things readily available, I, I think it was a three hour production with a cast of thousands um, that, that was part of that. Um, I hope sometime you can come to uh, the State Historical Society and check out some of the materials that talk about that. But those, those were the three, kind of the three big aspects of that. I, I wanted to mention one thing because I do know that uh, in 21, the, uh, this state capital was ceremonial, the capital for the day, and that's something that we're hoping to replicate. So that is in the works for us also on the 7th um, for us to be uh, the honorary capital for the day or the ceremonial capital for the day. Absolutely. We're really excited that that is happening. Um, also, uh, question that come on about the proceedings on August 7th, the Missouri Theater began. Danielle, you want to jump in on that? Sure. So um, the performances and documentary that are going to be shown on August 7th, the Missouri Theater um, and Jesse Auditorium, those will start at 7 p.m. But during the day, we'll have a number of exhibits, book talks um, from 8 to 4 p.m. scattered around MU, the Center for Missouri Studies. So um, and someone asked, what do you guys all suggest to help us get the word out about all these activities that are happening? So tell your neighbors, <laughs> tell your friends, share, share our social, follow us on social, because right now that's a really good way to keep updated on everything in addition to our website. But it's really easy to do. You could just share our post on your, your own social accounts. I think that's a strong way to do it. Um, there's still opportunity to get involved um, as well. Um, in the, in the bicentennial, in addition to the activities, you can you can still submit to the time capsule to our community legacies. There's a lot of ways to still get involved, uh, and then again, share that with your friends and your neighbors and and your family. So, uh, anything else, Michael or Danielle? People should know, Carrie. Yes, and where you can follow us on social media is Missouri 2021. So that's on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's so easy. So if you're not already following us, please do there. Um, and then also for the Bicentennial Bridge, we have a Facebook page, which is called Bicentennial Bridge. Um, also the Gold Star Families Memorial Monument Jefferson City also has a Facebook page. But definitely, uh, and if you look up the hashtag, uh, also Bicentennial Bridge, you'll see that uh, th those photos and progress there. And I'm sure if you also hashtag Missouri 2021, and I think Missouri 200, you'll find all ki kinds of things. Um, also, scoops across Missouri is a hashtag. So uh, we want to encourage everyone with the ice cream social to hashtag that and share your photos so that we can also share them. Thank you. And one of our participants today uh, joining us is Jackie Worth, and she just had a reminder for everyone that the Missouri Civil War Passport Program is endorsed by the Bicentennial Alliance all the way through December 2022. 
So you have an extra year to join that. So again, that information is on our website. And Carrie, I'm glad you mentioned that uh, our social channels as well to help reach us. So and follow us. Well, great. Yeah, um, and then, um, Beth, I just wanted to mention. Yes. So all all most uh, parks have a their own Facebook page. So if you just on Facebook look up the first Missouri State Capital State Historic Site, you'll find us. Uh, Missouri State Parks has a Facebook page that will have all of our event information on it. And then also uh, the Missouri State Parks Twitter, I think, is at MO State Parks for most state parks. Um, and then I can put my email or if, if anybody's interested in my email or getting a flyer sent directly from us, I can put that in the chat. Um, we're happy to do that. And like Beth mentioned, if you want to get involved with our event on August 7th, please reach out. We're happy to have a conversation with you. So we are just about at the end of our program and we have to, uh, we like to close out with a couple of prize giveaways. And this morning we had a drawing among the 89 folks who registered for today's program and our computer drew Joan Irwin. So congratulations, Joan. I'll reach out to you by email this afternoon to get your postal address and send you some of our swag. And one final one question question quiz and which is next i'll ask the question and the first person who submits the right answer will be our winner be sure to type your answer in the q a box and not the chat box but in the q a box so we see the first one to do that so here's the question how many miles has michael sweeney driven the bicentennial van oh let me let me go ahead and share my screen this is more fun if i do it that way let's see okay how many miles has Michael Sweeney driven the bicentennial van, which has been to each and every county of the state multiple times since June 2017, when Michael began working with communities to become involved in the bicentennial? So that is our question. And the first one to answer, maybe who might be closest? So I'm going to give everybody another 15 seconds here. Just make a wild guess. How many miles did Michael drive? And then I'll share with you the answer and the one who is closest to that. Here it is. 154,898 miles. Uh, and that is as of, uh, I guess, this weekend, the latest being in Cape Girardeau. So, so Michael, do we have a, we have anybody in there close enough? Ann I Miller had a hundred thousand. Yeah, I saw Ann Miller. That was the closest one I saw. Yeah, I think Ann Miller cool. has it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Congratulations, Ann. You are our winner, and you will be getting some bicentennial swag. And I'll reach out to you. So this concludes our final episode in this series. Misery 2021 presents. The program is taped, and recordings are uploaded on our website to view anytime. Many of you have joined us each month since last December, and you have been the most appreciative and smart audience. So we have learned from all of you by your engagement on the topics we've covered. So on behalf of our Missouri Bicentennial team and staff of the State Historical Society of Missouri, thank you. We hope to see you at the events in August, and be sure to keep following us on social at Missouri 2021. Bye for now.